What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, saints and angels, and welcome to Track Talk, a part of the Lactic Acid Network. I am your host, Dominic Smith. Y'all, we have to recap that London Diamond League meet. Specifically, there are two events that stood out to me. Without further ado, we're going to get into it. But even before I do that, well done to all the athletes. Like We're, we're going to talk about two events and a few athletes, but well done to everybody who competed um, and just well done to the people who came to the meet 50,000 people man 50 G probably more London that's a fast track um, and they are known to show up and support track and field man so shout out to them love watching I, I hope to go there one day hope to be a part of the um, media team you know, covering an event, getting the chance to see it live. You can tell that energy was hot. They appreciate good track and field. We got to get that over in the States. We have to get that over in the United States. Colin Waysman of Track World News talks about it. It's not a global problem. It's just a USA problem. And I'm just paraphrasing. Um, God, so many records like Alicia Monson broke the USA records. So Hassan did well. Uh, the winner uh, of the Women's 5K fails me. Ryan Krauser balled out, throwing 23 of 7. Some of that nature you got. Um, Talu, <laughs> 10.75. Um, and I think we need to, this is just a slide comment, let's pump the brakes on Sharika Jackson. She's going to be just fine. I promise you. I put every piece of chicken I've ever eaten on it. She's going to be just fine. Right now, Shakira Richardson, she's going to be just fine. Right now, it's just about what are we working on? Um, you know, maybe let's just make sure we're at these meets to get, you know, just to be at the meets. Because guess what? It, you know, she may not have won, but she got the points to be in that Diamond League final in Eugene, Oregon. So who knows the reasons? But I think it's just a massive overreaction uh, with some of these performances. Um, when it comes to them not winning some of the top athletes so it was it was a great great meet started early shout out to grant hallway um you know winning the hurdles 1301 um way van neekert edged out bryce deadman um 40 44 36 to 44 40. that's gonna be a fun matchup between van neekert and stevie gardner um in the men's 400 in budapest <laughs> y'all man we got to start with the men's 200 without further ado. Let's just get into it. Noah Lyles took home the W, 1947. Um, Zarnell Hughes in third place. I'm going to talk about second place in just a second. Breaking the British record in 1973. Noah Lyles is running with confidence. He's peaking at the right time, it seems, and it's not unreasonable to think if he does not break the record, he will get dangerously close. Um, I'm curious to see how... You know, now that he's got the, they get a day off between the one and the two. Um, but does the one take anything out of him? Um, because essentially you're running in, in a broken 200 on the last day, which is the final. So he's confident. You can't shake that dude's confidence. Um, regardless, you know, of what you may think, uh, how he handles himself and of how he is, you know, I think he told uh, the competitors, you know, you can compete for second, gold is mine, and, you know, it was 1947 was a warning shot. Uh, he's confident. That's just kind of how he rolls. Um, he's very passionate about the sport, about what he does, um, and he is the presumed favorite. Regardless of, of what you see, not even the presumed favorite, he's the favorite right now to win the 200 in Budapest. I don't care what you saw, what you've seen, no one lies is the favorite. Debate your mom on that one um, until proven otherwise. Zarnell Hughes, man, shout out to him, breaking the British um, record in the men's 200. And what a, if you, if you haven't seen it go on Twitter, what he did was he wrote it down prior to, um, running the race what he planned on doing and that was pretty much running 1973 and by pretty much he wrote down 1973 he won with i'm sorry he came in third with the time of 1973 and i really hope for his sake that he gets past 
these championship jitters because his potential and what he's shown this year. I'm not talking about winning the 200. I honestly think USA is going to sweep. Well, actually, I'm going to get to that in a second. I think USA has the potential to sweep the men's 200. But he can win the men's 100. Don't get it twisted. With what he showed in New York, what he's continuing to show, how he's peaking at the right time, his confidence is going up. If he can stay out of his own way, I'm still picking Fred Curley because Fred's been there, done that. But he, Zarnell Hughes, is somebody you need to watch. And um, I think that men's 100 is going to be very fun. I'm really looking forward to seeing him race against the big dogs. Hopefully we get a great matchup with him, Curly, Coleman, Charleston, and some of the best in the world, Omanyala, um, Oblique Seville. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. But I want to get to second place. Usually we don't spend, you, you don't build up something talking about the second place finisher. Let me tell you something, man. Let's leave to Bulgo. I have never seen anybody close the gap on Noah Lyles like that. Tobogo came in second place with his PR 1950. Never have I ever seen anybody close the gap on the guy and the guy being Noah Lyles who right now has the best top end speed in sport. I have never seen it. I have never seen it in my entire life, and it is the craziest thing to me. He, <laughs> if that race was 205 meters, I'm trying to tell you he would have won that race. I believe if he was in two lanes, if he was in lane in six, in lane six or lane four, he would have won that race. I believe it. This youngster is different, and he has all the tools, and I want to be careful I'll say this. Because we have a tendency of looking at one good race and be like, yep, that's it. He, he, he's the one. Here's what I'm going to say. He has the tools to be great. And I hope that his consistency continues to build. He continues to build consistency, rather. And that he uses those tools because it's great for the sport. My hope is that he brings that same effort and intensity to that 200 that he did in 200 to Budapest. Because Arion Knight is not going to lay down. I believe Arion is poised for a great, great championship run. I don't. I still have no lives as the winner. Um, he's not giving me a reason to see, to believe that he won't be. I think Arion Knight and Tobogo, um, to me, man, <sighs> that's going to be incredible. For second place, if Leslie brings it, because that 1950, we've seen it. We saw it. If you go back and watch his race, I believe it was the junior championships or or U23s or something like that last year, where he was jogging and well, pretty much he, he he demolished that field. Honestly, he could have ran like 19. I'm sorry, nine eight or 979 or something like that. But he started celebrating way too early, kind of showboating. That kid has potential. But I think you should root for somebody like him, somebody like Arian Knighton, because that they're going to go at it for years to come. When Noah's gone, they're going to go at it. And assuming Noah breaks the world record, those two could catch up because they're just young. They're young. And they're still learning. They're still figuring it out. I'm trying to tell y'all, man. I am hoping that the 200 in London is a preview of 200 of the 200 in Budapest. Boy, what a race that would be. Let's say Noah runs 1921. And you got to uh, Ariane Knight run in 1945, 44. And, and Leslie run in 19, like 194 as well. And then you got Kenny G or Kenny Bettnerick, you know, running 19.8, Like, that would be so good for that event. Competition breeds excellence, and I'm hoping we see that. 
What a run by him. Let's get on to the last one. And you guys should know what it is. It's Fem Cabal. Fem Cabal, I've been trying to tell y'all all year, Fem Cabal is different. I did not think that she would run that time. Femka won the race run at 51.45. I didn't think she would run that time this year. I was thinking maybe 52 flat, 51.9, 51.8, 51.4. There's only one person that has run faster than her, and that is Sid and Sid ran 50.68, obviously, in Eugene, but she ran 51.41 prior to that at USA, I believe. Femka Bowl, man. It's just, she's a bright light for the sport. She's a bright light for the women's hurdles, and God, do I wish that Sid was running the 400 hurdles this year. (laughs) That women's 400 is going to be insane. And I don't think Femka right now is in the place where she could beat Sid. I don't know if she'll ever be, but I think it'll be closer than what it was in the at the World Championships in Eugene. That is a phenomenal time. What Femka's doing is marvelous. And for me, let's say Sid takes the next few years, next two or three years, goes all in on the 400. Goes all in the 400 pairs. I think Femka, if Sid doesn't run in a couple years that specific race, I absolutely think Femka could break her record. The problem is, what if when Sid comes back <laughs> and, and it's a little different? Uh, but I don't want to keep comparing because it's just just enjoy greatness while I can. Those were two phenomenal events. Those were two I wanted to highlight on this incredible recap. I mentioned a few names prior to Ryan Crowder um, and some of the distance, you know, runners, Grant Holloway. It was an incredible meet. I hope you guys got up on a Sunday um, and got a chance to watch that meet because it was truly awesome. It was great to see. And I think it builds more anticipation headed in to the world championships in a couple weeks which is just crazy to me um that we are getting there it's almost there it's fine tuning time that was the last diamond league meet and so now we wait we celebrate and we go forward if you like this video like subscribe like ooh, see talking too fast if you like this video like share subscribe hit that notification bell please follow us on our other social media platforms like to gas it with dominic smith on instagram and like to gas a podcast like to gas a podcast on tiktok twitter like to gas underscore pod our link tree link is down there it tells us tells you rather where you can find us so until next time love peace chicken grease we'll catch you next time